Well, we're here with Shereya Dashlu, uh, who guested on Law & Order Special Victims Unit uh, earlier this year. Um, Shereya, I'm not sure if you're aware of the, the pedigree for this show, for the Emmys, for guest actresses. I mean, it's, it's, it's been nominated so many times over the last 10 years, and, and over the last four years, it's actually won. Um, were you aware of that when you took on this role? Yes, I was quite aware of that. I was a fan of the show when I entered, um, you know, this episode to to play my role. Yes, I was pretty aware of it. Of course, you know, uh, as an actor, didn't think about it beforehand. But while filming, I thought, oh wait a second, this this show has won so many. Uh, there is no reason that it shouldn't win another one. <laughs> so you can imagine, yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, and. Uh Sorry, go, Chris. Oh, I was going to say, this role, as an audience member, it really keeps you guessing as to uh, what your motives are and what is going on. What was it like to play this character, and especially what was it like to work with Mariska Hargitay? Well, it was fantastic to uh, to portray this role, a mouth-watering role, I should say, uh, quite dimensional. As you say, you can put your teeth in it. So they gave me an inch, I take a yard. I tried to do my best with this uh, a woman, you know, who's lost uh, in life. Uh, and uh, it was just great, a great experience. You know, it's written by one of our best writers in the U.S. Her name is uh, Judy McCreary, and it's she, we had a meeting beforehand and she basically told me about the character and she said, well, look, I'm a writer. I can write you a nice, um, you know, character that is uh, going around and about and, uh, you know, being seen uh, a few times here and there. But then I can write you a character that has dimension, that has, you know, meat in it. Which one would you like? And I said, of course, the one with dimension. And uh, it was just great. She, she did a great job. I'm, I'm still very grateful. Uh, for this for this story and for her to write it and working with Mariska was was just absolutely divine out of this world I love that woman she's incredible I am I have the you know a pleasure to say that she's now my friend I am now her friend because uh, two years ago she was kind enough to invite me to a uh, launch party and we became friends and she introduced me to her charity organization which is called uh, Joyful Heart that takes care of needy women and women in shelter, uh, especially, you know, during the Christmas time or, or uh, at the beginning of the summer, you know, and she does it all, you know, with the help of uh, first her own pocket money and then, you know, friends who also chip in. Yeah. But uh, I love that lady. I respect her to death. She's just incredible. She's a dear friend and she's a great actress both. Enjoyed Absolutely. working with her so much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, Sheree, you, you are you actually are going to be appearing on the finale of House We Hear, so you're not only guesting on SVU this year, but um, you also apparently have a very good role on House. Do you want to tell us anything about that? I am so sorry, my lips are closed. I have sewn. I can't say anything. I have signed a couple of pictures and a couple of uh, you know uh, letters that I, I I've not seen it. I don't know anything about it. I'm afraid I can't tell you anything. What I can tell you about uh, this this particular episode is that it's definitely larger than TV. It's uh, it could have been written for a film, and it was never been uh, almost never been uh, touched. The subject has not been touched on on television. And I was so surprised when I heard it. When it, when I heard about the storyline, I was like, how come I have never seen anything like this in in television, nor nor in films in in US, and no you know, nor anywhere else. It's the first time that uh, TV is, is focusing on this type of character, and I hope I have done a good job. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> You're no stranger to the Emmy Awards. You won just two years ago for House of Saddam. Uh, did you expect to win that night, and, and what was the experience like for you? Not at all. I wasn't expecting to win at all because the TV uh, series itself was not supposed to be aired uh, in that year. It was supposed to be aired in 2010. And all of a sudden, I was in, I believe I was in New York. My brother called and told me that, hey, sure, they're showing it now. HBO is showing it now. It was the last week of the, of the year. And I thought, okay, this is it. It's right in the middle. You know, uh, it's not going to be seen. But many people are, are now traveling on knowing vacation. But uh, then people 
actually had seen it, had voted for it, and when my publicist Nancy Sazer called me and told me about this, I was really shocked. I was really shocked. At least with the House of Sand and Fog, I heard that Mrs. Spielberg said somewhere that she's going to be nominated. And, um, you know, as an actress, like a child, deep down, I, I wish that it was uh, going to come out, you know, that it was going to happen. But with this one, I had no idea, none whatsoever. So when Nancy Sessler called, I was really shocked, and I was very grateful, of course. Uh, you, well, you mentioned House of Sand and Fog. Well, that was probably your, your big breakthrough in the U.S. and internationally. Uh, I remember when uh, it came out, and I, I actually remember the quote from uh, Mr. Spielberg about your performance and, and how you were a shoo-in for a nomination. And when the nomination arrived, it must have just been such an incredible feeling for an actress like you. who been, you know, You've been working since you're a teenager, and um, to get that kind of recognition for such an amazing role and working with Ben Kingsley and, and such a talented director, I mean, tell us all about that experience. When the rumors were out, uh, my husband asked me one thing. He said, promise me you're not going to cry. Because, you know, the sight is not nice and also you shouldn't, you shouldn't cry, you should be happy about this. So, and he, saw, he decided to stay up and see what's going to happen. I went to sleep because I had heard that if such a thing happens, then a car is going to be at my house at 6.30 a.m. And I wanted to have a you know, fresh face and make sense at 7.30 a.m. while when the interviews start. So, uh, when he woke me up and when he told me that I was nominated, Swear to God, I wasn't, I I had planned not to cry, but I couldn't help myself. And over there, for the first time, I realized what do people mean by saying a good cry? (laughs) You know, a cry cry out of happiness. I was crying out of happiness. And I remember first thing or, or first media got to me was BBC. It was right after the, uh, uh, they announced, and I was crying on the line, and my husband had to shake me and say, don't cry, just don't cry, you're not making sense when you cry, <laughs> just talk. So I, I sort of, I became aware of it, and I started, and they were like, you're crying, and I said, I'm ever so happy. To be honest with you, I'm an actor too, I can't hide it from you. Since I was a teenager, when I started my work in Iran, uh, I, I wished that one day, I mean, I knew it was, you know, just a mirage, but I was hoping hoping that one day I would be nominated. So here it is, after 50 years. <laughs> Let's enjoy it. <laughs> you know. well, thank you for that nomination. You're now an Academy member. And one thing I wanted to know is, uh, you know, as you look at films during each year and you have that ballot in front of you and you also get to make nominations, you don't have to give specifics unless you just want to, but what do you, as an actress, what do you look for in other performances that will, that will get your attention and cause you to vote for them? I certainly look for a for, um, um, kind of portrayal that does not remind me of the actor who's uh, presenting it. In other words, when um, Kate uh, Winslet, uh, she's done such a great job in, in Mildred Spears. When you're watching her, you forget who she is. I mean, in real life, you forget you're watching Kate Winslet. It's like you're watching Mildred Pierce. Um, when, when you're watching uh, um, Marlon Brando, you know, in, in, in some films, not all, all of his films, in some of his films, you forget that he's Marlon Brando. You're looking at this young, angry man who's shouting, shouting at Blanche. Uh, I'm looking for a performance that does not remind me, first of all, of the actor, or tell me how good the actor is playing, like Jeffrey Ross. I adore this man. I love his actings. I think he's a world-class actor, and he did such a great, great, great job in, in the King's Speech. And in all of his films, nearly all of them, Elizabeth, remember, that you know, when he's crossing the corridor, his robes, you know, uh, cutting the air, making the sound like when he walks. And you can tell how he carries himself, the air he's carrying himself with. So that, that's the kind of acting I'm looking for, kind of acting that would take me away from who I am, who the actor is, where I am, what's happening at this very moment and just take me to the story make me listen to the story and learn from the story 
I mean, uh, so Sheree, I mean, you would know, you've been working for a, a quite a while. You founded uh, Workshop 79 together with your um, playwright husband. You've uh, worked in a lot of his plays. You've been on TV for years. Uh, you were on 24, season 4, for a, a role for which many believe you should have been nominated for an Emmy. Um, so what are you working on at the moment? What's, what's uh, keeping your attention at the moment? Um, just now I finished a um, movie with uh, Disney, uh, The Odd Life of Timothy Green, one of the most beautiful, beautiful humanitarian message I've ever heard in my life. This film is just out of this world. Leave it to Disney, they will bring you the paradise, the heaven itself. We filmed it in at the heart of Georgia. I had not seen so much greenery since Wales. So back in uh, when I was a student in England but um, it's, it's just incredible it's beautiful first day I got on the set I thank God for sending me to the set because it looks so beautiful so so divine and working with of course kids I worked with a, an 8 year old uh, actress which we we had such a good past we had so much fun it was it was just incredible it will be out in the autumn and also uh, on Friday I finished house which is going to be shown in in two weeks I guess uh, and I'm also now dying to get on the stage I have a few of uh, one in UK uh, the one in UK has really you know uh, taken all my attention because um, I love Bernard Alba, and this is House of Bernard Alba. And most probably I will go to UK at the uh, top of the year for rehearsals and then the uh, exit of limited engagement. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm very I'll be able, able to do that. I, I want to do that. Because I'm really a stage kid. I started with stage. Well, we're looking forward to those projects, and uh, we thank you so much for your time today. And maybe we'll be uh, seeing your name on the Emmy ballot again this summer.